everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. Welcome to Facebook Friday. I hope you've had a great week. Um, today I've got three um, holiday, or I guess we should say Christmas, treat packages. I'm going to give it a second to make sure that I am online. I see some of you joining me, hello. Thanks uh, to everybody who's watching in the replay. I'm glad you are taking the time to, to watch um, if you couldn't join me live. So today, I had a lot of requests last time for just good old fashioned 3D um, holiday treat containers. Um, that's kind of my specialty. I love making um, treat containers. So today we've got three of them. Um, I decided to focus on the Iconic Christmas bundle. This one is really interesting and I um, have had it and haven't played with it much until my holiday retreat and then I started playing around with it and I love it. Uh, this is similar to one that's in the annual catalog that's a house and it um, same concept um, big open die and then you've got all the little things uh, three-step stamping. You'll see this is a great set um, for the Stamparatus that's coming out soon. Um, I want to point out like that every week when I do Facebook Friday, I type everything up for you and it's on a PDF that you can find on my blog. Hopefully the post will go live as soon as I go live here. Um, it's got all the product information that I'm using as well as the measurements. Each one of these today has some specific measurements that you're going to need to, to recreate these. So you can go over there and download them and print them out. I do have two things listed at the bottom. I just announced my stamp and bingo. I've got one local here in San Antonio, Texas, and I also have one that I do on Facebook. So if you'd like to check those out, the, the, um, Links are right here. You might have to copy and paste from the PDF. Um, and it'll give you all the specifics, the cost and everything, and then you can register there. Um, and also I wanna talk a little bit about Stamparatus. You guys know this is Stamping Up's new um, stamp placement tool. And they are releasing it. It'll be in the catalog in the summer when our new annual catalog comes out, but they're releasing it before then. And to avoid back orders, uh, which has been a big problem. They're doing a different system this time. As many of you are aware, they're doing a reservation window and they were doing three different windows and they had a certain amount, like they had a number that the factory could actually make. And that, I don't know, let's say 30,000. And as soon as 30,000 reservations were taken, they would close the window. Well, last time it happened in 18 minutes, the first window. So um, everybody got frustrated, um, wanted to get on the, the waiting list for these. And so Stampin' Up! has decided to do it different this time. So on December 5th, they're going to open that window again. And it's going to stay open until December 30th, no matter how many reservations they take. Um, so they will not close that window until December 30th. Then you basically are in line. So the factory can only make so many per day, right? So wherever you are in line, as they come out of the factory, that's who they're gonna start shipping them to. So just because you sign up that day doesn't mean you'll be in that first shipment. It just means you're in line. Um, I know you, we want this now, this tool is amazing and everybody is chomping at the bit to get it, but literally this is a production um, issue. You know, we can't wave our magic wand and suddenly have a million stamp rises ready. It's about uh, manpower and creating a brand new product. So um, this window will open December 5th. It will not be crazy like it was last time because it's going to stay open. But the one thing to know is that this is the last window. They're not going to open it again. So if you want to um, pre-order this, you're going to do it between December 5th and 30th. No payment is required. Um, they will charge you when it ships. So um, anyway, just a heads up on that. I'll, I'll give a little more information as we get closer. I think, what is the 5th? Tuesday? Um, yeah, Tuesday. So anyway, that's coming up. So the reason I was talking about the stamp rat is because I think that this stamp set, you'll see in a little while, while it's photopolymer, it um, is really, uh, you have to really get on top of it to line them up correctly. So um, so I was thinking while I was making my projects, I can't wait to get my hands on the stamp rat is. Uh, so let's do, let me talk a little bit about the giveaway. Um, this week, last week I gave away 
um, two sets of handmade cards. I announced that on Monday and those are already going out to the winners. This week I'm giving one lucky person the entire watercolor Christmas project kit and the watercolor Christmas stamp set that goes with it. This stamp set is awesome by itself. I've used the sentiment several times, um, not in the kit. And these too, they're so cute. So go over to my blog um, after this and enter. It's called a raffle copter. It's a little little um, widget or I don't know, little thing graphic down at the bottom and it takes all your information and then it randomly will pick somebody for me. You do have to you uh, be in the United States. I'm only gonna ship this within the United States um, so that I don't get in trouble with stamping up. So make sure you only enter um, if you live in the United States. Okay, as always, I am going to be offering these um, three make and take kits with a $30 order. If you want to put in an order by Monday night, use this hostess code and I'll send you all three make and take kits. Um, right now is a great time to order because the holiday catalog retired list just came out this morning and as we crafters do, we've all gone crazy and some of the stuff has already sold out. The stuff in the actual holiday catalog. Um, so I think one of the things is a foil snowflake. Someone was telling me they're gone. Um, so make sure you hop over there and look and see what's going. And if you've got to get it, get it sooner than later. Hi, ladies. I see all of you commenting. Hi, thank you for watching. Okay, enough about my chit chat. Let's talk um, about these make and takes. So the first one we're going to do is a Christmas tree shaped box. And you can see how the construction of this is. And I have found that you guys don't like when I make a box and don't tell you what goes in it. So I'm, I've learned that. Do you guys want me to tell you what exactly fits in here? So I've made uh, extra effort. My daughter and I went and did some major candy shopping this week at Target and I found things to make treats with. So since this set is a tree, I found these and I've already eaten several, which is not good. I don't need to be eating all this candy, but they're so good. Reese's peanut butter cup trees. So two of them will fit down in here perfectly like that, okay? All right, so let's do um, the stamping first. And I'm gonna show you, this is the big tree. Um, the, the fill, see all these little tiny little doodads, all the ornaments and things. Um, and this, this tree is big. I had to put it on my largest clear mount block. I'm laughing because I hear my dogs barking and I didn't lock them up. I try to lock them up when I'm doing Facebook live because inevitably every time they start yapping. All right. So basic black. Just right in the center of my Whisper White. And I didn't get my, my mat. Hopefully this stamps right. Well, okay, we're gonna do it. See how it's a little bit grayed there? The solution to when you're stamping big photopolymer stamps and they do that is to put a foam mat underneath. It's because they're so big, they need more cushion to, to push up under. But as you'll notice, we're only gonna see a little bit of these pieces in here. So I, that's gonna work for me. That's gonna be okay, we're not gonna redo it. If it was gonna just be that image up front and that was all you're gonna see, I definitely would redo that. All right, so now here's this weird looking stamp. You can see it's just weird. Um, this is all the red pieces. And it's my my uh, clear photopolymer has stained. When you use red, a lot of times it'll stain your photopolymer. That bothers some people, but it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I am turning my ink pad upside down to do this because it's such a big um, stamp, but I also find that because of all this right here, if I pushed it down, I would get a lot of ink up in there. So I'm gonna really try to control that by putting my ink pad up on top. Now, I need to be right on top of this to see, because you can see how I have to line this up and all these other little ones. So I'm gonna just pull it down a little bit, and because my camera is low, I can't even get my head in there. So what I do is I line this one up first, up there, and I kind of set it down. Then I look down here, make sure that one's in line, and then that one. And then I push down firmly. And let's see, ooh, we lined it up nicely. I love when that happens. All right, so now here's another weird looking stamp. You can see these are gonna be the wreaths, the trees, a few little pieces of the um, 
the presents. And I'm gonna use garden green this time. I'm gonna do the same thing. You can see this one um, didn't stain as bad as the other one, and it's because I didn't use red. All right, so start by lining up the one at top, up top, kind of set it there. Come down here before you set it all the way down and line the three in the corner. And let's see. Perfect. I love it. It's like a puzzle. All right, so now we've got all these little ones. And I will honestly tell you that when I first did this, I got out my markers and I started coloring them. And then later on I realized, oh look, there's all these. They have the stamps ready for us. We don't even need to color it in. So I'm going to stamp the little gingerbread man in soft suede. And I really don't need to do all of them. I could look up there at my sample and see which ones need because they're not all of them are gonna show through. Whoops, that guy's a little off. All right, I gotta pull it down so I can see it. But I kinda like filling them all in, it's fun. Um, so this stamp set has all, it has a lot of little pieces that are kind of hard to understand when you're just looking at the stamp set. And the more you play with it, the more you realize Okay, that's what those tiny little ones are for. Um, then they have these guys, and, and you'll see in a little while, in a little bit bigger shapes too. And then they have the matching framelits for those. It's really a cute, cute set. All right, so we're gonna do the bell, Daffodil Delight. I'm gonna fill those in. I think this is fun. This is kind of relaxing to do all this little, these little stamping. Okay, did I get them all? I think so. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, clean off my block. And these are kind of hard when you have these big ones, so I just spray a little bit of cleaner on my on a paper towel. It's hard to clean these in our, um, in our little cleaning pad. Okay, so now we're gonna do it in Garden Green. Garden Green on Garden Green cardstock, just to kind of give it that tone on tone, and that's gonna make those colors really pop out. All right, so right in the middle. And since I don't have a pad, I'm gonna turn it over and rub it. There we go. Okay, now we're going to cut these out. And let me show you the framelits. They're kind of cool too. We've got this big open one, which is the main shape over here. And then we've got this one, which is gonna cut a little bit out, a little bit of those things out. And then look, here are all the little doodads. They're so cute. All right, we're gonna need another green, solid green one, so I'm gonna cut that one at the same time. And I'm gonna use my, my uh, magnetic platform to make sure. Now this one, I'm not cutting any of the holes out, so let's cut the green one out behind it also. Not the green one I stamped, but a different green one. This will be for the back of our box. Run it through. All right, so we have that one and we have the solid one. Now this one, we're gonna wanna punch out some of the little doodads, the little ornaments. So we're gonna put this one around it and hope that my magnetic platform is holding things where they need to be. Now we're gonna take this one and put it right on top. And you can see how it kind of, it frames some of those little ornaments and reindeer and candy canes perfectly. And it's gonna cut some of those out. Now you could save these little guys for another project. And we will do that in a little while with the next one. All right, so let's see. When I take this off, some of these are just gonna fall right out. See that, isn't that cute? So you could save those. So if you were to do this on one that was already, that you colored like that, then you could save them and you know add them to a different project. Okay, Let's, let me put my framelits back where it goes so I don't lose it. Okay, now we're gonna take some of our mini dimensionals and have you guys started using these mini dimensionals? They're so wonderful. Um, they just are tiny and cute. You guys know how much I love 
dimensionals. So I'm just gonna kind of go along here, filling them in. Uh-oh, got a straggler. And you definitely wanna do along the edge where you can, and then a few in the middle. Do any of you already have this set? You know, I don't know if this is on the retired list. I haven't even really looked. I looked at what was discontinued earlier for someone, but other than that, demonstrators, today was also the day where we could pre-order from the occasions catalog. So my, my order today was more of that. So I don't know, is this on the retired? I'm sure it probably is. Okay, so here we're gonna line this up. Can you guys see that? Right on there, and it's framing some of them. There we go, cute, right? So cute. Okay, now let's make the box part. Uh, let me look at my notes. You're gonna need a piece of garden green that measures seven and three fourths by two and a half. And this is on that sheet, that PDF that's on my blog, so don't worry, don't write it down. You can go over and print that out. And we're gonna score it at two and a half, right here, and five and a fourth. And then we're gonna score it, I didn't write this down, let me think. Did I do this, is this one and a half? Yeah. All right, we're gonna score it at half, a half an inch and two inches. I guess I could look at the PDF too, I printed it out. All right, now you wanna just burnish those fold lines. And then I'm gonna take my fast fuse. I'm gonna run it along both long sides. I just put a brand new refill in here and that's acting kind of funny. Okay, now let's snip. You didn't see it on the retired list, Robin? Well, then maybe it's carrying over, good, because I really like the solid shaped Christmas tree. I think there's a lot of use for that. I'm gonna show you at the end, guys, don't let me forget, I'm gonna show you at the end some other things that I've done with it. Okay, so I'm gonna, on this middle one, I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna center that over it and make sure it goes right there on the edge, like that. Then I'm gonna come up, actually, one thing I did not do, was cut these at, at a, an angle. So make sure that you cut these at an angle like this. And the reason I put adhesive on before I cut is because it just kind of saves me a step because I can do it in one long swoop. But make sure you cut these, but I didn't do that. Okay, now that's gonna allow this to, to go up at an angle. Let me lay it down so you guys can see. We want it to be inside this right here. We don't want it to go any further than that. And I'm just gonna kind of lay it down there. And this one's the same. Okay, just like that. And then this one's just gonna lay right there, but I wanna make sure they're even on the bottom. So first, I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna, whoops, it's a little bit too far over. We want it to be even. And there we go. All right, there's your box. You can really put anything in here. There's a lot of things that would fit in here, a lot of different things. All right, let's quickly make the tag. This project's taking me quite a bit of time. I'm gonna stamp the sentiment in real red. I've already cut out the oval. This is a stitched shape framelit, whisper white. And then we're going to, whoops, I better keep that open. We're gonna do the reindeer the larger reindeer, which I need to put on a block. Let's find him. There's so many little pieces that I didn't have enough blocks for all of them. Well, I probably did, but I didn't take the time to get them all out. Okay, so let's, this is soft suede. So I'm gonna stamp him once there. And we're gonna take that off. Here's the, now he's the bigger reindeer. Remember, here's the tiny one that we filled those, those shapes in. Here's the larger one. This time I'm gonna do this in soft suede, but I'm gonna stamp off first because I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to be a lighter shade of soft suede. All right, now there's one more 
tiny baby stamp. It's so cute. It's the nose. It's so cute. And I'm going to stamp if I can see where I'm stamping. There. All right. Close that up and get that big shot back over here. I love to close that ink up. Makes me nervous to have that ink laying like that. I have had ink disasters. I'm sure some of you have had ink disasters as well, where you ruin a project because you leave your ink open. It's not fun. It's usually at the very end of the project too. All right, so frame, look at that. Fits perfectly and my magnetic platform is holding it right in place. Cut him out. Put my framelit back so that I don't lose it. And we're going to stick him on here with one of those super cute little baby dimensionals. I love the little dimensionals, except I feel like my fingers are too big. I have a harder time getting the paper off. And I know there's like tools and stuff you can use, but I'm usually in too much of a hurry to find a tool. All right, how did I have this? Nope, I had it over like that. Nope, we're not even gonna use that. We're gonna just use a clip because we don't wanna stick anything on our cute tree. Just a library clip. And a real red ribbon making a bow. Like that. This ribbon is a, uh, whoops, let's try that again. This ribbon is so satiny soft that it is um, almost slippery, I feel like, when I'm tying a bow with it. Okay, there we go. Pull that. Don't pull that knot in the middle tight until you're ready and you feel like your loops are good. All right. And a glue dot. And there we go. All right, project number one. Those uh, trees. Now I'm gonna fill those with my trees and get them out of my house so that I won't eat them anymore. They're so good. Do you guys like those peanut butter? I mean, who doesn't? I guess if you're allergic to peanut butter, you probably don't, right? I don't know, peanut butter, um, chocolate peanut butter cups are a favorite in our house for sure. All right, project number one is done. Let me move it out of the way. And we're gonna do project number two. This project is a box, and we're gonna do kind of the same thing with the tree, except this time we're going to stamp it on crumb cake. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Um, so what's inside, let me show you. The ribbon just slides off. Probably should have gone backwards with the ribbon. And inside is a Christmas tree cake. So cute. This is a little Debbie snack I'll show you from Walmart, Target, HEB, whatever, wherever you do your grocery shopping, I've seen them everywhere. This is little Debbie and littledebbie.com has a snack finder. We have discovered that it has a snack finder. So if you're looking for a certain snack, you go on there, you enter your zip code and they will tell you where to find it in your area. Isn't that cool? All right, let's make the box first. You're going to need a piece of real red cardstock that is eight and a half by six and three fourths. And I don't know what these were set up for, but it's not for us today. I have been working on lots of different projects. So who knows what that was for? Let's move them out of the way. I love those when I have to score something the same over and over. Okay, um, so on the long side, the eight and a half inch side, we're gonna do one and a fourth, and then we're gonna do four, and then five and a fourth, and eight. Now remember, this is on the project sheet over on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. You will find it there. So on the short side, one and a fourth, five and a half. Okay, so you can see we have this short tab over here. We're going to cut out those little squares, or rectangles, I guess they're rectangles, like that. And we're gonna cut these at an angle. It's always a good idea to cut your tabs at an angle. And, oh gosh, I need to clean my scissors. These are my good scissors too. All right, so now for each one of these lines, we're gonna just cut it, cut a V to cut out the line. That way we are cutting the score line, but we're also cutting each tab at an angle. So just go in on all of these along the long side. 
and cut a very narrow V around that score line. And it doesn't matter what it looks like really because this is all gonna be inside the box. Just like that. And then we want to make that a V and that a V. You guys are quiet today. I'm, I'm keep glancing over and I, I'm not seeing too many comments. Maybe it's just my uh, iPad's not showing me much. All right, so here we have it. Let's fold in, let's burnish all those score lines. This, um, my Walmart, I was actually there again today in the, Deb, the little Debbie aisle. The Walmart people probably think I have a little Debbie addiction, but they make the cutest little snacks and I can always find them early um, in the holiday season. All right. I love fast views, don't you guys? <laughs> Just when I use it the right way. Okay, so I'm putting fast views on the opposite side of these tabs. These two right here. Um, and I'm gonna fold this one up and fold this one up like that. And then I'm gonna fold these in and push them in like that. There's the main construction of our box. Now, we're gonna cut this tab in half because it's too long and it makes the box difficult to close. But we wanna keep that tab on there because it helps us keep clean, um, clean lines when our box closes, if that makes sense. And then, well, let me put it in the little chocolate. They came in um, three flavors, these Christmas trees. Today I saw green ones. And close your box. And there's your box, okay? Easy. All right, now let's do the trees. We're gonna do the trees actually twice. Okay, we're gonna stamp. Where's my tree stamp? It's gigantic, why can't I find it? Here it is, okay. We're going to stamp it twice in crumb cake ink on crumb cake cardstock. So, two times, ink it up upside down because it's so big and let's see if I can get a good solid image without my yeah that looks good I like stamping this on crumb cake for two reasons first it was it hides my flaws a little bit better than <laughs> on the whisper white so if you don't get it lined up just right it actually is um, it it's okay it doesn't show up as much um, the second reason is because it kind of gives that vintage -y feel. I think it looks kind of vintage. All right, sorry guys, I'm pulling this down to the bottom of the screen so I can see. I have a really bad glare from the light that I use, so I have to pull it way down. Okay, there's one. And again, line up that ornament at the top and then come down and line up the hat in the corner and the stocking in the bottom corner, and then everything should be lined up. Good. Okay, now we're gonna do a garden green. Boy, I have a lot of stamp pads out today. Garden green, line it up with that top wreath and the bottom two little pieces, if I can see them correctly. That was a little off. Okay, that'll be the one we do on the bottom then. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just pull it way down so I can make sure this, to line this one up right. Hmm. Sorry guys, I know, be patient. Please hold. There we go. Oh yeah, way better. Okay, now let's go in and fill in our bells just like we did last time. Goodness, that glare is bad today. Cute little bell. See how it just really gives a different vintage look with it being on the crumb cake instead of the whisper white. Okay, so Daffodil Delight bells. And what else do we have? We have cute little gingerbread men. The gingerbread man is my favorite. And he's gonna be the star of our third project because he's so cute. 
And because my friend Kay, I don't know if she's watching today, but she found the Little Debbie Gingerbread Men and was like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. So of course I, ha I had to go buy it because they were cute. And I actually have used those Gingerbread Men before. Um, when I was a kindergarten teacher a million years ago, we would um, do the Gingerbread Man the first week of school and we used those little cookies because then we didn't have to make them ourselves. Because the first week of kindergarten is exhausting enough. But to have to come home and make, you know, two dozen... Oops, I forgot that guy. Two dozen um, gingerbread men is exhausting. So when you can find them already made... Did I miss any more? Okay, let me go back. So anyway, they're cute. And I think I might have used them in the past, too, for, for craft projects. But I don't remember. Okay, there. So... There we go. Let's cut them out. Hi, Tammy. Can't wait for my set to come. Oh, yes. I know. They're so cute. They're so cute. Okay. Let's get out our framelits. Here they are. Exactly where they're supposed to be. With a few doodads stuck in. Um, so one of these we're going to cut out. Oop, no, that's not the one. We're going to do the better one of the two to be in the front. And that's the one we're gonna cut out the doodads. And this time, we're gonna save all the little doodads and we're gonna use some of them. All right, so you guys see I've got it lined up. Thank you, Magnetic Platform. Run it through. And I'm gonna get my piercing mat and carefully poke all these all out because I wanna save them. I don't want them to fall on the floor and all over the place. So they just come out really easily. And I could just use my fingers, but I like using my pierce, my piercer. All right, these guys are hanging on. What are they doing? All right, there we go. Okay, so put these in a safe spot over here. And now for the second one, the one that goes underneath in the back, we're gonna put, we're just gonna do the outline. Oh no, my battery is low. Okay, everybody hold on. Y'all, my, uh, for some reason my phone, all of a sudden, the battery is just going down so fast. It's an iPhone, so you guys, I and I updated. Is it the update that's making it drain so fast? Sorry, sorry, sorry for the shaking. Is y'all's is y'all's new is y'all's iPhone doing that? Because I mean it is not holding a charge at all, and it was not doing that before the update. I hate those stinking updates, don't you? Urgh. Oh, you know what? No, we'll do that in a minute. Okay. Focus. Back to what we were doing. Okay, so now we're gonna do just like we did with the the first one, some dimensionals, and I'm not gonna do as many as I did before, just because. Uh, for time's sake, I'll just, oh, that one lost its sticky. I'm reading your comments. I know they are excruciating. I hate the updates. And you know what? I was not going to do the update and I kept saying no, no, no. And then one day it like snuck up on me, on me and caught me off guard. And I was trying to do something else. And I think I clicked yes. And so the next morning my phone had updated. I was not happy. Okay, well, I got to figure out that battery because that's making me so mad. Um, even when I'm not doing things like this. I mean, my battery should last for one video. That's crazy. Okay, so just like before, now we're going to get all of our cute little doodads and we're going to pop some of them out. So really, this is going to be three layers, one, two, and then some of these are going to be layered up top. So let's see, let's do a wreath. More baby dimensionals. And this is just really giving you a lot of, um, you know, dimension and making it look, um, you know, more, 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 uh, have more texture and be more exciting, I think. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's do this present right there. What else do we have? I'm not gonna do all of them, but I wanted to do some of them. I'm gonna save some for, ooh, that may be too, even too, no, that's perfect. I'm gonna save some of them 
for the other piece that we're going to do here. Now you want to get, well, hopefully my phone is charging. If it dies, I'll start another one. You guys will just have to hold tight. All right, so the sentiment this time is long and skinny, and it says, uh oh, I already have it right here. Greetings. What does it say? Greetings of the season. And I have two of them, just in case I smear one. Because I'm going to do something to it. Oops. So let's, let's stamp two, just in case. And I was going to hit it with a heat tool to make it dry, but now that I've got this crazy cord going across here, I don't think I can do that. So when you have a long, skinny paper like this, if you'll take your bone folder and go like this, kind of, you know, make the paper kind of curl, see, like that, then you can put it on and it looks like a banner that's kind of, you know, flowing. All right, cut some V's at the end. Uh-oh. I'm all like flustered because of my phone battery. That's really frustrating. And I don't know what to do about it. I can't see if it's charging or not. Okay, so now we've got the banner. Let's put that across. And we're gonna add a few more doodads um, to the little banner. All right, so we'll just put it across. Where did I have my other one? Yeah, just kind of like that. And then let's get a couple more of these little guys that we cut out. I like the hat, the Santa hat. And we'll put that over here like that. And another thing that I did, and this one I had to use a glue dot because it's just so skinny. The candy cane can take the place of the eye right there. So cute. Right? Oh, so cute. Okay. We're ready to put this on the box of our cute little, little Debbie snack. And I'm just going to put it like that. Well, we want it straight. And then I've got my crumb cake classic woven ribbon. Oh no, stay together. That's okay. Little box, stay together. Let me cut the ribbon off. It's not staying closed. It's saying, eat me right now, lady. What are you doing putting me in a box? This is just kind of to add a little more cuteness. All right, come on, box. There we go. I like this ribbon. It ties really well. Good grief, what am I doing wrong? Okay, there we go, yay! Another treat box done and super cute. And it's got that fun vintage feel. Cute, right? I love, I think this is my favorite of the three projects. I don't know why this one's not staying closed either. I gotta tie it down, make those cakes stay in there. Okay, project two is complete. Let's do project three and hope that my battery is gonna survive. This one, I told you the gingerbread man was gonna be the star. Here he is, so cute. There he is. See how I just tied that around like that and just made a slider? This is a really simple project. Let me show you the box of the little Debbie gingerbread man cookies. Just like the other box, it's a Christmas box and they're everywhere. Okay, so you're gonna need a piece of soft suede Oh, please hold just for a second. Let me make my, my mess a little bit less messy. All right, crumb, I'm sorry, soft suede cardstock that measures seven and a half by three and three fourths. And we're gonna score the long side at three and a half and four and a half inch and three and a fourth. This is a simple box construction, and I do this kind of design all the time, so we can just slide things in and out. You just, one piece of cardstock and you fold it together. Let's do some gingerbread man. 
stamps all over the place if I can find them. How many times do I say that when I do Facebook Live? If I can find it, here it is right here. So like I was telling you, look at all these weird pieces, right? So we know this one, this is the, the one we stamped in red and these are the ones we stamped in green. And then they've got these bigger ones with the outline and the smaller. So this is the reindeer that we did on the first project. Um, and then they've got the teeny tiny guys right here. These are the fill-ins for this. See how tiny they are? So I'm gonna go over here and get this. Um, oh, you know what, I forgot the, the, uh, the, the, what do you call that, the trunk on the tree over there. I was gonna stamp the trunk and cut it out, but we didn't do it. Oh well, that's all right, still cute. All right, so let's get, do I have him already on a block? Oh, where is he? He has run away, my gingerbread man. Hmm, interesting, he has run away. The gingerbread man, isn't that ironic? Okay, well we'll use the, oh no, he's right here. See, he did run away, he just wasn't where he was supposed to be. All right, so we're just gonna do a bunch of little gingerbread men all over the front. Whoops, he's so, so cute. Do some sideways. We'll even do one upside down. Some half on, some half off. There we go. Okay, now we have cut right here, just those two, and we're gonna fold, burnish in those lines. And we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on that side of that tab, and then on the this side of this tab. <laughs> what is my fast use doing today? All right, so these little tabs are gonna go right here. These big long tabs are gonna go on the outside. Okay, and there's your little box. Now you wanna get your gingerbread man cookie. And we're gonna take, this is the white version of that um, crumb cake ribbon we did earlier. The white woven, classic woven ribbon I think is what it's called. And we're gonna tie it around him so that the bow is at the top. I like Little Debbie snacks because they're very inexpensive too. You can get a, you know, quite a bit for your money. I think eight of them are in a box for, I don't know what, maybe $2.50, something like that. All right, slide them in, and there he is. Now we're just gonna make a little tag and we're gonna use some twine. Let me look at my tag so I can remember what I did. All right, let's stamp him just a couple of times, hanging off like that. And then the two and from, see how many, I mean, there are so many stamps in this stamp set, I just love it. To and from, right in the middle like that and get oh oh no this is the best part actually that's not the best part you know what I didn't do that right S start over we're going to actually stamp and cut him out and put him in the middle so we do want to do this and we do want to do that but we want to put the to and from on the bottom like this because we're gonna cut this cutie little guy out and we're gonna pop him up. I forgot. All right, Big Shop's coming back. And let's see, I do have my framelit where it's supposed to be. Put him right there. Now these tiny framelits do need a little you might have to move them around on your magnetic platform to find a place where the magnet wants to hold it. Because sometimes you get it in a place where the magnet wants to push it away. All right, there we go. And once again, our little baby dimensionals right here at the top. And I just thought he wasn't, it wasn't enough. We needed something else. So I pulled out my epoxy stickers and I got a red heart and just put it right 
there in the middle of him. Isn't he so cute? I mean, these, the, you know, if even if you don't want to use the tree, there are so many cute stamps in this set and little framelits um, that I just, I think it's a great set. There's a lot of um, different uses out of those little guys. All right, some white twine. Let's see if I can thread this right here. And just tie it on around the bow. Uh, thanks for the hearts, guys. And I'm gonna trim that. And that's it. That's a much simpler treat holder, but so cute. I love the little epoxy sticker. I think he's so cute. All right, so let's take a look. Oh, and I was gonna show you two other projects that I have made using this, this set. Um, so this one was one of the projects we did at my retreat. You can see we just used the framelit to make this cute little just decoration. Um, this is in my retreat PDF if you're interested in it, but you can see how cute is that? And um, little place settings. I don't know, I just thought that was very cute. And then for, if you're in Stamp Club and you want you don't want a sneak peek of this month, don't look. This is this month's Stamp Club card. You can see I used the negative of the tree, popped it up, added some. This is actually the Happy Birthday Thinlet and just cut off the birthday part and put Christmas. So cute, right? I just think those big framelit shapes are awesome. And I am I am uh, really enjoying it. Okay, so let's look. We had three projects. All three are available in the um, project sheet that's over on my blog. And if you place an order, minimum $30 order, using this hostess code by Monday night, I will send you all three make and take packets for free in the mail. All right, you guys, let me know if you have questions. I'll go back and read your comments that I probably missed. Um, thanks for joining today, and don't forget to take advantage of that retired list before things run out. All right, and I, oh, and enter the drawing for the uh, watercolor Christmas kit over on my blog. All right, you guys, have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.